Welcome, musicians. Let's get started. So last week, I spoke about two-handed runs, and the idea behind that was that both hands were playing individual lines at the same time. Well, this week, we were talking about the opposite, runs with two hands, and the idea behind that is that both hands work together to play one line. And these types of runs are generally called arpeggios, at least the ones we're going to talk about today, arpeggios. Now, if you are a gospel musician, there are a number of songs and artists and musicians that I consider required learning. Like, you have to know these. You have to study these uh, because they give so much information about this music that we call gospel music. Now, when I say this, I'm not referring to the songs you have to learn for Sunday morning. Those are important. But what I'm referring to is uh, the songs that changed gospel harmony change the way gospel music is played um, and these are the ones you must study and one musician that has changed the game for everybody is Kevin Bond now most people credit Kevin Bond with the modern West Coast sound um, the sound that's used by guys like Jason White and Mike Burrell and many many other musicians and I believe personally he's one of if not the most influential gospel musician and producer in all of gospel music even to this day. On the album Diary of a Psalmist by Marvin Sapp, which Kevin Bond played on and produced, uh, there's a song called Miracle. Now that's on that song, on the introduction alone, Kevin Bond does three absolutely incredible arpeggios that I just think every musician should know. Now I can't play the record here on YouTube due to copyright issues, so I'm going to play it myself to give us a gist of the a sense of the song and so that we can start focusing on those three arpeggios. So that's the song. You, could, you can see it's pretty involved. There's a lot there. But there were three really incredible arpeggios that Kevin Bond did that we're going to focus on. So let's jump right into it. The first arpeggio I did was over the C sus, C7 sus. And we know C7, well, first of all, C7 chord is. But we're sussing it. So we're going to make it sus4. So we're going to take the third and. Put this, oh, F there, the four. And so what he did was he actually just played those notes, those very notes, but in this order. And then ended on top. Start on top. And so notice the left hand is playing one note and the right hand is playing three notes. So. That's over a C bass. You see? Now the hard part is moving and landing accurately. So you gotta do this, practice this slowly to get used to that. Um, but once you get it, uh, it becomes really really second nature to you. Right, so that's the first run. C7 sus. Uses the same notes of the chord. Nothing special. Let's go to the second one. Now the second arpeggio that Bond did occurs on the B flat 7. So he goes... right here. Now, he does these notes. So A flat, B, D, E. So if you look at that, it's the flat 7 of B flat, the flat 9, the 3rd, and the sharp 11. So we have the two guide tones of the 
of B flat seven, the third and seventh, and then two color tones, the flat nine and flat five. You see that? Then he comes out of it, and then it uh, goes into the next run. But one more time. And again, one note in the left hand, three in the right, and the real focus on playing it evenly. Now the tendency is to want to just use a sustain pedal to cover up like and be sloppy, but the cleaner we are, um, the less we have to depend on the sustain pedal to clean up our, our, our run not being even. Um, and while I'm here on this one, let me just give you a couple of variations. I love doing something similar, but I'll do two notes in the left hand, A flat and B flat, and I'll do four notes in the right hand often, so I'll do this. So, you hear me do this all the time. And the third arpeggio he did was on the E flat major. Uh, he did this. Right? So he's playing the fifth of E flat major, the sixth, the seventh, and the ninth. So um, I guess this would be the, the, the fifth, the, this will turn into the thirteenth, seventh, and ninth. If I add the root here. So we have an E flat nine, E flat major nine, excuse me, add 13. There. Yeah. So. So. All right, so how do you practice this? Okay, so these kind of arpeggios can be very, very difficult to get. Um, and so there's a practice technique uh, called chunking or grouping. Um, I think that would be really helpful for doing these. So it's easy to group this like this. One, two, three, four, right? One, two, three, four. And then try to go to the next. One, two, three, four. And that's an important group as well. So can you play this? But there are other groups, starting on the second note, third, fourth note, and then the fir first note again up here. So, let's group it again. Let's make um, this note, this note, this note, this note, in this order group. So, keep the same fingering. And so you can see as we start grouping them in different rhythms or different groupings of notes, um, the focus is on diff something different. So on this group, the focus is just getting these down. This next group is getting the left hand over. The next grouping is getting the right hand to move. Uh, and so forth and so on. So that's a good way to practice it. Besides the tried and true methods, which is just going slowly. Now, if you're going to take the, just the rope method of just just going up and down and not do a grouping thing, um, I would say always, whenever you need to stop, stop on after the cross. So don't stop here. Practice stopping. Make the cross. Whatever you do. Now, when we look at these arpeggios, I'm noticing a pattern. And I'm wondering if you notice the same pattern that I'm noticing. And that pattern is, one, the left hand plays less notes than the right hand. Matter of fact, it seems that the left hand always plays two notes less than the right hand. When the right hand plays three, the left hand plays one. When the left hand plays two, the right hand plays four in the variation I gave you. So... Um, that's not a hard and fast rule, but we can use that rule to create our own. Also, I noticed that uh, 
the left hand, if, if the chord has black notes and white notes together, the left hand generally plays the black notes and the right hand stays down to play the white notes. Kind of makes it easier to, uh, to maneuver. Um, now, the other thing I want to talk about really quickly is note choices. Um, let's see, on our first run that we did over the C7 sus, we just used those four notes. On the B flat 7, we used the 3rd and 7th, and then we had two color tones. So if you remember, we had the 3rd and 7th of B flat, but we also had the flat 9 and flat 5. On the E flat, we had the 5th, 6th, 5th, 13th, 7th, and 9. So only one, well, two chord tones, and then two color tones again. So there we go. So let's um, let's do uh, arpeggio over C minor. Let's do C minor. And so let's let's follow our same pattern. Let's do one note in the left hand and three in the right. And uh, let's choose two chord tones. Let's choose E flat and G. Let's do. So remember our chord is C minor. So we're going to do E flat and G for our two chord tones. And then let's choose two color tones. So let's choose the uh, the six. I love the six. Y'all know I love six. And the nine. So this is our chord. So first up, I'm going to put the E flat in my left hand, the black note in my left hand, and then the three other notes in my right hand. And I'm using one, two, four on my left hand. I'm in my right hand on this one, so. I mean, that sounds pretty good. So you can use this idea to create your own arpeggios, your runs with two hands, if you will. All right, so again, thank you so much for checking out this video. Um, now make sure you grab that free uh, PDF that I have in the description box where I, I talk about all the different musicians, not all, it's not a comprehensive list, but many of the musicians and artists songs that you should know. And I also include links in there for you. So definitely check that PDF out. Remember to subscribe to the channel. We are on our way to 100,000 subscribers. Like I'm super excited about achieving that milestone. It's a huge milestone. Also, uh, comment your suggestions below for new videos. I want to create the videos you want to see. All right. So until the next one, be blessed and happy practicing.